Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Nightrun Studio and we are just about done this shop system tutorial series. We've just got a couple little things left to do and in this video we'll be setting up our item info panel so that we don't just have to buy and sell things but can actually see the stats of the items we want to buy. The way this is going to work is we will mouse over these different item slots and when we do the item info panel we'll show up where the mouse is with newly populated info and when we mouse off of the items it will disappear again. That's where we're headed in this video, let's get started. Now to make this happen we'll have to create a new script, we can call this one shop info and this will be what powers our panel. Let's open up shop info to start. Alright now to start off we'll get rid of our start and update method and we're going to make a public canvas group here which we'll call info panel. This is just a reference to if we click on our info pop up here we can see that we have a canvas group and we can just toggle it on and off in order to make this appear and disappear. We're then just going to have a bunch of variables to make. So we'll start with a public text mesh pro text reference. We'll call this one item name text and we'll have to add the namespace using TM pro. We'll also make another text mesh pro reference, which will be for our item description text. Next, we're going to have the text that will actually display the stats of our items. But for this, we're going to make it into an array. This will just allow us to customize adding as many stat lines as we feel we need to make this clearer out in the inspector. We'll just give this one a header, which we'll call stat fields. Now in order to make this panel move around and follow the mouse, we'll need a reference to its transform and since it's a UI element, it'll be specifically the rect transform. We'll then make an awake method so that as soon as this fires up, it'll find the info panel rect. And here we're just going to get it right off the component. In Unity, we can click on the info panel and add our shop info script onto here. And then we've just got some information to fill in. So we can drag over the canvas group first of all into the info panel. We can then head over and grab our name text here from the name backing and also get our description text and drag that in. With that done, we now just need to make a reference to all of the different stats we have. Now, if we open up our stats, I created six of these earlier, but however many you made, it'll work just fine. I'm just going to lock the inspector and we can shift click all six of them at once and drag them in here. What we'll just do is turn them off when we don't need them. And then if we have three stats on an item, we'll turn on three of them and populate the stats with info. Now that we've got references to all our UI, we can actually make it do something. And for this, we're going to need three different methods. First, I'll make a public void one called show item info, which will show the info for the item. We'll need to pass in an item scriptable object as that's what's going to have the info. I'll then make another public void. This will be hide item info, which will just turn off the info panel. And finally, a public void called follow mouse, which you guessed it will make this thing follow the mouse around. Now we'll handle actually calling these methods in just a moment, but let's set them up first of all. So in show item info, first thing we want to do is just get our info panel and have its alpha go to one, which will just make it fully opaque. Next, we can actually populate the text. So we'll tell our item name text that its text should be equal to whatever item name we have on our scriptable object. We'll also get the item description text and make its text equal to the item scriptable objects item description. Now adding the stats gets just a little more complicated so we'll save that till a little later. So now let's just head down to hide item info where we can make our info panels alpha go back down to zero in order to turn it off. We'll also just want to take both of our text types the item name text and also our item description text and just set their text equal to empty quotation marks which essentially just empties them out. Now for our last method, we just need to set it up so that the rec transform for the info panel follows our mouse around. So we'll do that by making a vector three called mouse position. And here we're just going to use Unity's input in order to actually find the current position of the mouse. Next, we're just going to create a little offset as we don't want the panel to actually show up directly on top of the mouse as then we wouldn't be able to see the item in the slot. So here I'll make this offset equal to a new vector three. In my case, I'm just going to go 10, negative 10, 0. This will just move it a little to the right and down, but you can play with these numbers if you'd like it to show up in a different corner in relation to the mouse. Now that we've got our current position and our offset, we can just make it so that the info panel's rect is set to a position that's equal to the mouse position, but just with the offset added to it. So it'll find the mouse and just move a little right and down from that position. Now with all that setup complete, we're ready to head over into the shop slot, which is where we're actually going to call these methods. So first of all, at the top, we need to make a reference to our shop info. We can just call this one shop info. Next, we're going to use a built in interface that Unity has called I pointer enter handler. Here, I'm going to use a little cheat. I'm just going to double click on this, right click and then use quick actions. 
And here I'm just going to add our using line using Unity Engine systems. You could also just type it in. I'm going to go and go here one more time and implement the interface, which is just going to create this line down here, which you could also just type yourself, as we don't even need this stuff underneath here. This is just garbage, anyways. Unity has quite a few pre-made interfaces, but this one specifically is designed to fire a method whenever the mouse pointer enters an object's raycast area. In this case, it will also pass along some data about that pointer, even though we won't really need that for this script. Now this part's pretty straightforward. Just as soon as the mouse enters, we want to tell the shop info script that it should show its item info. And here we'll just pass along whatever scriptable object is in this slot. There's just a tiny bit of setup here. First, I'll just unlock my inspector. Then I'll shift click all of my slots at once and drag the info pop up into that shop info box here. With that done, we can hit play and test this out. And now as soon as the game starts, you can see that as soon as my mouse hits this, it populates the item name and description. Working pretty good. Same thing when I move to the pumpkin, it changes the info and whenever I go back and forth. Now we can make it so that the panel disappears when our mouse exits this item. For this, we'll use the eye pointer exit handler. And again, I'm just going to implement the interface to get it to type the method name for me. Here, we're just simply going to go shop info dot hide item info. And this time we don't need to pass along an item as we're just turning off the panel. And the final interface we'll use, which will just help us with following the mouse around, is the eye pointer move handler. Again, I'll implement that interface, get rid of the garbage that it auto prints, and now here I'm just going to add a little check first of all. I'm going to make sure if item SO is not null, because I don't want the panel to follow the mouse around if there's actually no item in the slot. And if you like, you could actually add this in our on pointer enter to, so that the panel doesn't turn on if there's no item in the slot. Now you'll also notice I could put brackets on each of these, but to save space, I'm just choosing not to as there's only a single line after the if statement. And so it will behave the same regardless of whether I put those brackets on. All right, this time there's no setup necessary. I can just mouse over, I get the mushroom, move to the pumpkin and it changes. And when I leave, it turns off and then turns back on again as soon as I mouse over. Now the last thing we're gonna wanna do is make it so that we can start displaying the text for each of the different stats on these items. To do this, I'm gonna head down into show item info and here we're actually going to make a list of strings. Remember, strings is just characters. Now, the reason I'm using a list here is because an array cannot be changed during runtime. So if I decide that I'm going to have six stats, I'll always have to have six stats, whereas a list can have items added and taken away from it while the game runs. We'll call this list stats, and then I'm just going to initialize it as a new list of strings. So essentially, this just makes an empty list of, that we're going to call stats, and right now there's nothing in it. Now this next part is a little cumbersome, I'm afraid, and this is just the sacrifice we make for me trying to make a system that is really beginner friendly. It would be a little bit quicker if I had a dedicated abstract class for stats, but we decided not to go that way. And so here we're gonna just need to make an if statement for each of our stats. So the first will be if item so dot current health is greater than zero, meaning if the item in this slot actually has a current health stat, Remember in my item SO, I've got current health and max health, depending on whether we want to heal or actually change the max health of the player. Now here, if I do have health, then we just want to tell this new stats list that it's going to add a line to itself. And that line will just say health colon, and then it will have the item scriptable objects health amount. And don't forget to convert that to string. So this might say health colon two, if it heals you for two. We'll then need to just go through and add an if statement like this for each of the different stat types that you have as a possibility to be on an item. In my case, I've only created four so far, but you may have more than this. For example, if it's a sword and it has damage, then we'd need to have if item SO damage is greater than zero, stats are gonna add damage, and this time it would take in the damage amount. You can go ahead and fill this in for whatever stats you want to use. At this point, we've created a list of characters saying like health three, damage two, that sort of thing. Now we actually wanna make those show up on our panel. So first of all, if the stats count is less than or equal to zero, meaning the item we've hovered over has no stats, let's just return as we don't need to keep processing this show item info. That said, in most cases, there will be a stat. So for this, we're gonna use a for loop to go through all of the stat text objects on our info panel. We're just gonna go through the entire length, checking to see if we have a stat to put into that text mesh pro. If we do, we'll just set that stats text to be equal to the stat up above. At this time, we're also gonna have to make sure that we turn the game object on. So just make that stat line appear on the panel. 
which also means that if we run out of stats, we need to turn the object off. To do this, we'll need an if statement. This will just check if our current run through the list has exceeded the number of stats we actually have to display. If it has not, then we'll go ahead and fill the stats. However, if it has, we need to turn this stat game object off. Now, blessedly, there's actually no setup to do. That said, you might want to turn off your info panel by default. So now you can just mouse over the items. It will populate with the stats you need, all of the item info and the name. And whenever your mouse leaves, it'll turn off. All right, that's actually working quite nicely. All that remains at this point now is to set up a shopkeeper who will be able to actually toggle the shop on and off and also make it so that when we click on the items, weapons or armor, it changes which items are actually being shown. We'll get to that in the next video. I hope to see you in that one. Until then though, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.